She knows all types of stuff. We need to turn the baby this way. Maybe try this move or this technique to open up a little bit more. I need her to help make sure everything stays intact down there. I need mean, everything intact too. <laughs> you have no choices if you don't know that you have choices. Because mm -hmm. a big piece of birth trauma that happens so commonly. <laughs> What's hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. Well, as y'all can see, I've got my twin sister. Probably you're thinking that you're seeing double. You're seeing double, but no, there's an actual separate person there. It's her twin. We've been on the channel before. It's her twin, Kirsty. Yes. is Christy. And she recently moved back to the ATL. Mm -hmm. So we are so excited that she is nearby. She is going to be my doula. Yes. Y'all, I'm wearing black trying to camouflage it, but. I am 37 weeks pregnant. I am so excited that my fabulous doula is back just in time <laughs> for my birth. Yes. <laughs> Today we are gonna be sharing why we hired a doula, besides the fact that she's my twin. <laughs> yeah. That's a big part. <laughs> so, I mean, obviously not everyone has a twin that they can trust with that, but we're gonna talk about some reasons why we, we think it was a good idea. And I have learned so much in the process of hiring our doula and even of our consultations, things, all this information is like, Wow, a few years ago, I don't think I knew what a doula was. <laughs> I definitely didn't know. When we gave birth the first time, we went to a birth center, so there was midwives. I thought that was the same thing. And I, I thought it was the strange I thought it was too. the strangest thing. They're like, no, if you want to bring a doula in with your midwife, I'm like, that sounds like <laughs> it did like, sound why would I spend more money? You're already here. <laughs> Until we actually did go through that birthing process. Right. The midwife actually was barely in the room. Honestly, she just delivered the baby. Right. She just delivered the baby. She really wasn't in there. First of all, Kirsty, what is a doula for those so, who don't know? I'm really glad that you brought up the whole midwife thing because that's actually a really, really common misconception that doulas and midwives are the same thing or that midwives perform doula services, which they do not. Although both midwives and doulas are considered more in the natural birth realm, the more holistic birth or the technical term physiological birth, of course, some midwives who operate in hospitals, they're certified nurse midwives and can actually function very similar to obstetricians, except for they don't perform surgeries like mm. C-sections. Mm. They are still considered medical personnel versus a doula is not a medical professional. A doula is a birth professional. A doula specializes in physiological birth. There the reason I say physiological birth is because sometimes people say natural birth, they don't know if you mean a vaginal birth, an unmedicated birth, or both vaginal and unmedicated. Physiological birth is all about the physical process of giving birth to a baby vaginally and without mm. medication. In physiological birth, doulas are birth professionals. Their sole job is to support the mother and her partner actually physically, emotionally, and educationally throughout pregnancy, actual labor, and the immediate postpartum period. Oh, mm. I feel like I'm still learning. <laughs> cool stuff. Well, <laughs> I'm about to jump in, but if you haven't already, make sure you like the video, click subscribe, hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss an upload because we upload new content every week and you do not want to miss a beat. Absolutely. The first birth, which was cool enough, we got the job done, it worked out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she was going through a lot of contractions. She wanted me to provide counter pressure. Now she was in labor for like 20 hours that yeah. day. But that's considered a pretty short labor for the first time, I think. But it felt like an eternity to me. <laughs> because I was doing counter pressure for her from whenever she went from active labor. So let's say six in the morning, something in that range to like nine, nine, nine at night. My arms, you know, my wife laughs at me, <laughs> were so tired. And I was looking like, this is the best I could do the next day. Like my arms were like, Oh, they were just Y'all, this man act like he had given birth to a baby. So for those of you who don't know, counter pressure is someone else providing pressure in the area that you are feeling the most intensity, which for me was my lower back. So he's like putting all this pressure on me, but he is acting like he just birthed the baby. Excuse talking me. Talking about how sore he is for a week. Oh. Excuse me. I resent I'm that, like... number one. Because <laughs> you know what? Next here? time, do it. Give yourself baby? counter pressure for, two, for that long. Because your body was doing it on its own. I had to volition <laughs> choose to do what I was doing <laughs> and had to work through it was doing it on its own you, so I'm you, just chilling. you I was, was going to give birth one way or the other but your was, body was going to do it I didn't have to do but what I, I was did. just chilling and I still don't 
<laughs> so I'm just saying this. Ridiculous. My arms were Ridiculous. like jacked up. My hands were stuck <laughs> the next stuck. couple of days like this. I was like, <laughs> he passed me that because I can't do it. I was having to put all this pressure on her. It's because we took a birthing class and it said apply counter pressure, but they didn't say like anything else. Kirsty, we had the pleasure of taking her class. Cause she's she also a certified childbirth educator. Yes, yeah. which is why she uses terms like physiological birth. <laughs> <laughs> she was explaining things like, oh, you can use your elbow, I'm like, Duh, I should have thought of that. You can sit on her. I'm like, shoot, I'm I'm a big boy. I could have definitely done that. That would have been easy. My wife was punishing me. Her mom was there and I'm like, can I get a break? She's like, okay. She's real sweet and willing to help. So I'll help. That was like for two minutes. And she was like, uh-uh. You back. I was like, I, I need Brandon back. I need the muscles. <laughs> As though I wasn't doing nothing. <laughs> we did an it awesome was, job. It we was an agonizing. Awesome job. But anyway, we went to Kirsty's class and she taught us all sorts of things. Can you tell us a little bit more about counter pressure? Absolutely. So I know Christy gave a brief explanation of what counter pressure is, but counter pressure is physically putting pressure. And of course, there are many different forms of counter pressure, but what he's specifically referring to is the double hip squeeze. So the double hip squeeze is when you're putting your hands right around the hip area. And of course, you know, I'm putting my hands around air right now, so you can't <laughs> really see, but you're providing pressure right there that's actually creating more space in the pelvis. Obviously with mm -hmm. childbirth happening, you know, with the baby trying to descend down to the birth canal, with the uterus, you have in these strong contractions then the contractions for those who've never had a baby before contractions you may think of them only in your stomach but they actually wrap around to the muscles in your lower back which is why everybody who experiences physiological childbirth experiences the contractions in their abdomen as well as around their lower back. When you apply this counter pressure, it is physically creating more space, which is giving baby more space to move and navigate the birth canal while also providing some relief to the mom. So when you do hire a doula, then you shouldn't feel like your hair is about to fall off <laughs> because that's why I said that doulas support not only the mom, but their partners too. Your doula is there to switch out with you for the counter pressure or do all the counter pressure because she's hired to, to do this. But obviously, you know, doulas never replace the partner. Now, if it's a single mom, let's say she has no family around and she wants that replacement, we do replace. But other than that, doulas are not there to replace your partner. There's a very special role that your partner plays that mm -hmm. the baby's father plays or even that your mother could play. A huge piece of that is rotating with that partner so the partner can get breaks for their arms. It's another reason why it's important for doulas and when you're hiring a doula to make sure that you hire somebody in shape because it takes a physical <laughs> toll on your yes, body. That's true. <laughs> Obviously, Brandon is very well conditioned physically, but some men could not physically go that long That's without true. exercising their upper body very well. And your doula's also helping the partner by rotating out so that your partner can go eat during labor. Which I didn't um, get to eat the entire right. day. Um, and then even your partner being able to take bathroom breaks without mom being left alone. It's the continuity of care that if you are in labor for a day, two days, three days, then your nurses are changing shifts, your doctors are changing shifts, your midwives are changing shifts, mm -hmm. but your doula does not. Now some doulas will change shifts with a backup doula, which I don't do. And I know a lot of doulas who won't do that because it's taking away from the mm -hmm. continuity of care that a doula provides. Another piece of that continuity of care is making sure that mom is never left alone. The more breaks here and there and the more self-care that your partner is able to do, the better they're able to support the mom, both physically and emotionally. See, she knows what she's talking about. <laughs> I mean, it's very clear. She does. I mean, y'all, when she first got passionate about this a few years ago, this girl was sending me educational videos <laughs> constantly, texting me about it all the time. Every time we talk on the phone, she's talking about childbirth stuff. She's sending me nasty videos <laughs> of people delivering their partner's babies and all types of stuff. But she is truly gifted and anointed to do this work. I mean, she loves it and her level of wisdom and expertise in this is like, it's so, impressive. It That's is. a big part of why we went ahead and went with a doula this time for additional support, but also for the expertise. Mm -hmm. She was able to enlighten us on so many different aspects of childbirth. The first time we were proud of it, we were doing some circuit to get her 
to speed up the contractions and move along. And we were just coming up with stuff off the top of our head. I and mean, it was like, <laughs> you know, boot camp and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. I was giving her assignments and then breaks. At a certain point, it would have been helpful to have someone experienced and knowledgeable enough to, hey, we need to turn the baby this way. So we need to maybe try this move or try this technique to open up a little bit more. She knows all types of stuff, like how to prevent tearing. And that was really important for you. My first baby, Isabella, was eight pounds, seven ounces. This is a boy, so I don't know how big this boy's about to be. I need her to help make sure everything stays intact down there, okay? Me too. I need but... everything intact too. Maybe more Whatever. than you. Whatever. <laughs> Why did I hire a doula? This time, we are going to actually be giving birth in a hospital setting because I value a natural vaginal birth. I want to make sure that whatever options they present us with or things that they say we have to do that we really don't have to do that we have an advocate an expert there to be able to help us to navigate that to have the birth that we want to have right. can so. you elaborate on something that a hospital may tell you that you need that you really do have the power to decline and do it safely right so i think one thing that a lot of moms and their partners walk into hospitals not realizing is the power of informed consent. Oh yeah. You do not have to follow the standard protocol of how every patient is treated. Mm -hmm. There may be certain things you're uncomfortable with. You do not have to consent. Your body, your baby, you have basic human rights. <laughs> you can decline mm -hmm. certain things. You have the right to be fully informed of not only the benefits, but also the risks of the things that they are offering you. So any procedure that they offer you, any medication that they offer you, even if you go in for induction and then they're talking about, well, we need to do this to your cervix, we need to do that. We're gonna look into some Cervidil, we're gonna look into a Foley balloon or a Cook catheter, then you have the right to ask, well, what are the risks associated with this as well? And not only that, but what are my alternatives? to this. Sometimes without the education or without representation, you don't even know that there are alternatives. Right. And you don't even know that you can say, you know what? I don't know. Come back in 30 minutes. We want to think about it and talk yeah. about it. You know, that's huge because actually when you were giving birth, even though we were at a birth center and we had a midwife, the midwife initially tried to push us off to the hospital, tried to transfer us. Before like, we even got to a room. Like, no, I done paid all this money to do it at this birth center. <laughs> You're trying to transfer me immediately. And it was for something that wasn't even real. Yeah. Like, it wasn't even actually a factor. We didn't find that out until at the end. But the point is, you know, with the information that we all had at the moment, she's immediately trying to transfer us to the hospital i had just happened to have that class prayed god like what can i do he gave me a question i just simply said what are the risks and then what are the alternatives right now and she said well you know i can give you two hours in this room to make progress and i'll check back in on you every half an hour I said all right let's do that sure enough we started making progress baby was doing fine christy was doing fine we were able to give birth at that birth center but it was only because i asked a simple question now i don't know all the questions to ask and I don't understand all the medical terms and risks. So having Kirsty or any doula present that's knowledgeable would be extremely valuable. I could tell that the nurse just really wanted to push us off into the hospital. <laughs> she was ready to go home, y'all. And, and sometimes it happens that way and that's why it's so important to know the questions to ask. Like you said, some people don't even realize you literally can just ask for more time. The majority of the scenarios, it's not an emergency. Mm. If it were an emergency, they would treat it as such. Right. Like they'd be called that's an ambulance. Right. get you over an emergency c-section even at the hospital if it were an emergency you would be clear that it's an emergency at a birth center that they may talk about transferring you but in a hospital it'll be more like mm, you haven't made any progress so mm. at this point we're going to either break your water or give you pitocin which one do you want right and mm. you don't have to mm, okay well i guess you can give me pitocin like you don't have to answer right now you can have them leave the room you look over to your doula say hey can you explain to me what are the benefits of this what are the risks associated with this and what are my alternatives because i really don't want either one of those things mm. right your doula can explain and you look over to your partner and be like hey well, what do you think <laughs> and then you can proceed mm. because a big piece of birth trauma that happens so commonly is when people feel like their power was taken away mm. when 
And they walk into the system and feel like a victim when they walk out. Mm. You can avoid feeling like a victim when you hold on to your power. You have mm. no power if you have no right of choice. You have no choices if you don't know that you have choices. Right. Mm. And you don't know what your options are. Yeah, you know, you kind of learn that in sales too. Would you prefer A or B? Which obviously the other option is you just don't have to have either. Right. <laughs> right? We do that in sales all the time and it works. They do that in a hospital setting and it's confusing because they have a, a lot more authority from an expertise standpoint we're not here to bash any medical professionals but that does sometimes come off and you don't realize that you have other choices you have to look at what are they selling here right in a hospital setting they are selling pharmaceuticals they're selling medicine yeah. surgery they are not selling physiological birth they do not specialize in physiological birth and like you said yeah. that's not bashing them at all but you yeah. must look at what does each person bring to the table here mm -hmm. so your doula brings the physiological birth your obstetrician brings your options of hey what if worst case scenario happens mm -hmm. here this is my mm -hmm. surgeon who's gonna help me and baby to right. survive mm -hmm. so you look at these medical interventions to say that if I need them they are there mm -hmm. but the hospital is set up for medical interventions so if you walk mm -hmm. into birth saying I don't want any medical interventions I want to let my body take control well then you must look at who is going to help you with that right. not mm -hmm. that they have any malice in their heart towards you right. but ask the question what do they specialize in right, right. right. We we are so excited that we have the, I call her doula Foley, <laughs> <laughs> um, as our doula. For those who are in Atlanta, you can check out her doula services. She also is an excellent childbirth educator who offers in-person and virtual childbirth education classes. Yes. So where can they find you? You can check out my website. It is PowerfulPeaceDoula.com. And then you can find me on Instagram or Facebook as simply Kirstie.doula. Well, thank you so much for Thanks sharing for with us me. today. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. <laughs> if you haven't already, make sure you like the video, click subscribe, hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss an upload because we upload new content every week. And when you subscribe, make sure you leave us a comment saying, I subscribed. And we'll be more than happy to reach out to you personally. And thank you for joining the family. Till next time, y'all, unless that baby's here. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>